Welcome to a Parallel Project Training APM Project Management Qualification Podcast based on the APM Body of Knowledge 6th edition. You should be using this in conjunction with our e-learning, study guide and potentially a tutor-led course. For more information, please visit www.parallelprojecttraining.com. Hello, welcome to another Paolo Project Training podcast with John Bolton and Paul Neighbour. Today we're looking at uh, one of the favourite topics in the um, APM Project Management Qualification, um, Configuration Management. And this is part of the um, assessment criteria, explain how to manage scope through requirements management and configuration management. So it's a sort of second part of our podcast in this area. So um, configuration management is about the control of the design, really making sure that everything that we make um, fits together really mm. it's, it's consistent so you've got a consistent set of drawings and documentation if you imagine all the products in a product breakdown structure yes they're all they've all got a specification uh-huh. they've got a product description and if that never changed you'd never need configuration library <laughs> yes good yes but because people in the requirements bit we talked about people changing their mind yes or maybe not just change the mind, but maybe something needs to change. Maybe standards have changed, or we found that something doesn't work, or you know. So you've got to change the product description. Yes. And as soon as you start doing that, there's always a danger that any of the products that relate to it need to be changed as well. That's right. The interfaces, or, or that there's like a house of cards. You know, you yes. sort of knock one domino over, and the whole lot falls over. So we can link that back to our requirements capture bit, That's right. because we talked about lots and lots of different products that all have to integrate. Mm, that's right. So it's about controlling the integration between all That's those right. different parts. That's right. And it's it's at multiple levels, though, because it's it's not just that the actual physical components fit together. Yes. It's that the system ch- doesn't That's change. Right. And the, if the system changes, then your overall requirements might change. That's right. So the top document's often requirements yeah. spec, and then anything yeah. that's affected by that yeah. needs to be, the changes fact, need to be right. controlled. But the very si- in the very simplest form, it's just the interaction of multiple com- multiple products. Yes. So if I change the diameter of the wheel, I've got to change the diameter of the tyre. Yes. That's I mean, if right. I don't remember to tell somebody that, then they might not know. Yes. And on a very simple thing, that's dead easy. Well, it's not dead easy, but it's it's, it's manageable. I don't think it matters informally. On a simple project because what you do is you, if the wrong stuff gets delivered to site, you then modify it on site to make it fit. You do an on site patch it's or not, on-site not, mod. Not really a planned way of doing it, though, is it? No, it's expensive. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah. Um, I mean, there's loads of examples where configuration management's got people with a hell of a problem. Yes. You know, delivering, you know, engines to ships at sea and things like that and finally don't the fit. The wrong one. Yeah. Yes, that's right. So I think, you know, right. and, and it's, people talk about document management systems and I think probably uh, to a large degree that gives you the re- de- repository where all these files and data and documents go but it it's a bit more than that it's it's how do you check things in and check things out of that yeah library? quite often what's missing in those systems is the change control process and uh, yeah and yeah. and so they act yeah. as a source for the documents but they don't have a, a flow for mm. how you um we need to talk about a little bit more what configuration management is before Talk about implementation, really. Yeah. Well, well configure. Yeah. I mean, the thing that the, the acronym that seems to everyone seems to love, and I'm not so sure about it but anyway, is called PICSA. And they talk about configuration planning. Yes. So you write a configuration management plan, you work out who's going to do what, what tools you're going to use, what the process is. You identify all the items, which is I. So you've got PI. Identify all the items, and you do that through the product breakdown structure. You come uh-huh. up with an identification of all the discrete products and how they interact with all the other discrete products. Now, that'll include technical products, drawings, physical products, yes. but also the management products, like That's the right. requirements spec. And, That's right. But not every product goes in it. So I often, it's quite interesting, sometimes things like status reports, monthly status report, because it doesn't affect the design, won't be under config control. Well, I disagree. You think you'd do your monthly report through mm. config control? Yeah, and your risk logs, I think. Yeah. Oh, would you? Yeah, yeah. That's quite an overhead, though. It's not really. There's only half a dozen of them. Okay. Well, you know, if it, how do you know you're looking at the right risk log? If I'm the sponsor, how do I know this is the latest status report? It might be just as simple as having some sort of a document identifier at the top. No, no, that's fine. That's fine. But you want to do a change request you every want to time change. you want no, to no, update no, your no, risk that log. <laughs> well, that's good. In a perfect project, you wouldn't do a change request. 
Yes, but when you do your monthly review of your risk log, you wouldn't then write a change. But you don't, yeah, but you don't start the project the figuring out which projects which products never going to change, do you? Yes, okay. So you, you allow for the fact they might all change, and you keep them all in the same library. It's not a problem. They've got to go somewhere. Yeah, okay. So okay. It, and if they don't change, then what's your problem? We used to give customers a change request form at the start of a project, and they say, well, "What's that for?" I say, "Well, when you change your mind." I say, "Well, I'm not going to change my mind." Well, we don't need it then, do you? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know? yeah, no, 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 I'm happy with that. But um, I, I just whether you put, I mean, some people like you put everything in, but that just makes it more work when you're doing. We used to split it. So ten, tell, tell me how much more work it is to put it in a in a configuration library than putting it on a uh, server somewhere. Well, it's the change control process and the configuration item controller process. So if I wanted to change the schedule for the project. I'd have to raise a change request. It'd have to be approved. Well, exactly, because you're changing the baseline. The I would, you've definitely got to do that. That's not no, negotiable. No, no, not to change the baseline, just to do the monthly update. Why would you change the schedule? Because I'd have to. Because every month you update percentage complete on each yes, activity. Yes, I know, but you're not moving any of the, the completion no. dates or anything. No, but I am checking that product out in order yeah, yeah. to modify the mm, current forecast. Just proves it's been done. Everyone budget, knows where it is. And the budget sheet, so you'd have to check out. But you've got, yeah, yeah check exactly. Out the budget. Yeah. But you've got to, you yeah. to put your monthly forecast in, do yeah. a change request to update the form. Yeah, yeah. But the configuration okay. librarian's got a list of who's got a, who, who gets to see all that. They okay. do all the reporting from that. It's the, it's the engine room. It's okay. the. Okay, that's fine. Well, some people do it that way, but it does create a lot of extra work. It doesn't create a lot of extra work at all. You've got to do it somehow. Okay. So you may as well use the process you've on. got for it. <laughs> Right, so we do the product breakdown structure, and so we include everything in that then. All the documents, everything that we produce. That's right. All the, the entire scope of the project is under check. What about email? No. Well, you, you, you don't log those in and out, no. no. Okay, so everything. Because an email won't change a product. No, that's right. An that's, email, right. Uh, it, that's right. The, anything, the configuration owner changes a product. That's right, anything that changes the product. Hmm. Yes, take that, okay. Um, so control is I want to change this product. So this product has been designed, and a control is a, I think always control is about the individual product. So <clears throat> I want to raise a change request to change this particular product. So that has a little flow diagram. So I'd like to um, I don't know make this building two foot bigger. So that means that that one change has to affect a number of different products. So we. We raise a change request that says, please can I move this building two foot? And before we move that building, it has to be then evaluated by the design authorities or the configuration item controllers for the foundations, That's right. the That's walls, right. That's the right. roofs. That's right. so that change request goes off on its little journey, gets evaluated by all those people, and comes back to the item controller who says, I'm happy that actually we can we can do those. Well, on a complicated, uh, yeah, bit in a complicated environment, you have a change control board or a change control board who sign where you, off where you get all the key. That's right. Configuration item owners together. That's right. Well, you sit down at the table and say, "Are we going to move this wall two foot that way?" And the roofing guy there, the drainage guy's there, the foundation guy's right. there, and they're, they're all looking at their drawings. Oh, it's really hard for us, and yeah, there's yeah. then a decision. And I think that splits off from status accounting because status accounting is what the librarian does, which is keeping track of all those different changes. So you've got quite a lot of products, and you might have quite a lot of changes. Uh -huh. So somebody has to be responsible for tracking the entirety of all those changes right. through the system. That's right. So, um, Well, a status account is the, is the uh, accounting for the status of a product. Yes. In the same way you account for money. Yes. So it's just a great big spreadsheet with yes. all the products on it and the latest versions on it. And the latest dates they were changed, and they open change. So the changes and, and any status is any, associated with any yeah. changes that we've raised that have led, right. led to be incorporated That's into right. that bit of the design. That's right. Who the who the who, this, who the owner is? Yes. Which other products they interact with? That's and right. And also, who needs to know about any changes to them? That's right. That's, that's right. That's the bible of configuration so that's management. The whole system. That's right. Whereas control. Is the little journey that one change yeah, request right. follows, yeah. and, and and I think that's quite useful. Cause Updating the status account is part of control, actually, but the status account in, in, in its yes. in, individual sense is yes. a, is a separate yes. step or document, if you like. Yes. So the configuration item controller has mostly to do with the configuration control, and the librarian mostly looks at the status accounting, hmm. as if you think about the, yes. the roles. I mean, they do overlap, but yes. <clears throat> but their main as a and as an item the, controller, you mostly see individual change requests. Yes. And the status account is under configuration control. 
It is. It is. <laughs> I would never put my risk register in there. <laughs> then audit. Right, audit. We used to have 2,000 products. And we had about 3,000 open changes. Yeah. And so what we used to do every uh, uh, sort of design release, we used to do an audit. So we just used to get all the drawings out, all the specifications, and just check that there weren't any gaps mm. before we went live. So it's, it's a review, really. It's just checking that all the, you know, how many open change requests have we got live? You generally around. get an external order to do that. Because um, you can't mark your own work. Yeah, we used to do it as the yeah. configuration team used to do it yeah, yeah. for the for the project in the PMO. So, yeah, the, so I suppose that's sort of external to the project. Yeah, you got to get someone external. You can't the configuration librarian can't do it because they can't check themselves. Yeah. It's a general yeah, separation of duties. Kind yeah. Of, it's common. No, common we principle. Used to do, I mean, we couldn't afford to get an external auditor in. <laughs> so we used to. Do a, a configuration baseline, basically, yeah, which uh -huh. was a set. Check it all, make sure it's all consistent, a known, mm. a known state, really. Mm. I think it's interesting. It's um, it's, a, it's configuration management in software is very important. Yes, because there there are no tangibles. You know, when you start to put a building up, you can see, you the, can gap. see the gaps. You yes. can see, and you can sort of almost measure it as you go. I yes. always say never scale off the drawings and that yes. sort of stuff. Okay, yeah. So, you know, discrete measurements to be taken on site, and yes. all that sort of thing. You can't do that with software. No. You can't build a bit and then say, well, let's see how that works and we'll build the next bit. Well, I suppose you can, but it's not a very planned way of doing it. Well, you can never find all the bugs. Yeah. That's and the problem. You can well, never, you never be 100% certain yeah. that you've found all the bugs. Mm. So the only way of doing it is to control the design in a very tight way. Mm. And, and then, you know, you, you get modules, and, and one, one module will be passing data in one format, and another one will be accepting it in another format. And yeah, The problem comes with configuration management is when you've got stuff coming in from outside, stuff that you're not, that you're not controlling. Mm-hmm. So, you know, basically you're, you're, you're specifying the interface between what you're doing and what a third party's doing. Mm -hmm. And you, you sort of trust, open, expect that that's going to fit. So if you're building a car engine and you say, I want a, a water pump and it's got to fit this flange. Yes. And then you ex you'd give them the exact drawings of what that flange looks like. You'd expect the manufacturer to be able to build it. Yes. And when it turns up on site, you'd hope it fits. Yes. So that's why I think configuration management is... Um, mostly found in, in sort of software development and IT systems. Aerospace is very good at it. Yeah. I and, think, um, um, well, they... Um, and yeah. nuclear power as well, right? Yeah. And, but where, buildings do it, but it's not always uh, not always complete. Yes. But, you know, you have plan chests on building sites. You yes. Know, and you go and draw the latest. Yes. And you can't rely on matey with a screwed up copy of the plan in the front yes. glove box of his transit van. You yes. Know. So... You know, I think, so it, I think it, the, the, the a majority of it all happens. It's the control of status accounting and audit. It's the whole bit around the configuration librarian and the yes, management. That's, right. that's why I said at the beginning, it's, it's all around that management of the database. Whether that database is a filing cabinet or a computer system, it doesn't matter. It's all about how that individual accepts that responsibility for making sure that everything's right. And it's Cinderella service, isn't it? You never re you never recognise it for what it is until it's gone. You know. Okay. Yes. You know. Yes. It's, it's, it's downsizing. It's, it's, this. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's a fairy tale because it never happens. No one ever <laughs> realises the value of it no, until it all goes wrong. No. Yes. No. I did a job, but it's just just configuration management. You know, just um, there was loads of other stuff as well, but it was it was you know the the core of it was being able to reproduce tests, mm -hmm. and you had to keep everything down to the last nth of mm -hmm. detail. So we talk about the roles then. So the roles we've got are the librarian who operates the system, sets it up, probably has a big role in writing the configuration plan, would you, management plan, would you agree? I'd, you'd want an expert to do it, yeah, but I suppose you've got, like anything, you've got to get it assured somehow. Yeah. yeah. The assistant who supports the librarian. Yeah. The item controller who is technically responsible yeah. for the products mm -hmm. and signs off changes. Mm -hmm. Um. At the change control board is where the all the item controllers come together, quite often with the project manager and the librarian to discuss changes. Mm, yeah. And the project team, yeah, the people basically who have to follow the process. Yeah, that's right. If they go, not going changing documents mm. without mm. due 
authorization from the system. That's correct. Good. Consequences of poor configuration management? Doesn't work. Doesn't work. Doesn't fit. No. Lots of last minute mods, yeah. patches. Yeah. Wasted materials, wasted design. Yes. yes. All the steel comes on site, it's not quite the right size. It's like, you know, it's, it's, it's the, the world is cluttered up with examples, isn't it? Mm. But. Brilliant. Good. All right. Great. Thank Great. you. We hope you enjoyed this podcast and found it informative. To order a study guide, e-learning, or a tutor-led course to go with this podcast, please visit www.parallelprojecttraining.com.